Come in. Hi. Good morning, Tim. My name is Mary, and I'm a student nurse with CVTC Technical College, and I am here to um, give you some IV fluids that the doctor has ordered. Would you prefer me to call you Tim or Timothy? Yep. Tim? Okay, great. Um, so I'm just going to check your name band here real quick, and I'd like you to give me your full name and date of birth, please. Tim Pimentlo, 7 10 64. Okay, thank you very much. And do you have any allergies, Tim? Okay, that's just what my chart says here. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started. And before we get started, I'm just going to kind of tell you what I'm doing. We are going to be giving you some IV fluids. Have you ever had IV fluids before? Yes. Good. So you kind of, kind of have an idea. So the IV fluids are going to be given right through your IV. And that just means that we can get them in quickly and they get absorbed quickly through your body. So that'll help you with, their, with your dehydration and the infection that's going on as well. So we'll give you some medication for that through your IV in a little bit. But first we're gonna go ahead and get started with um, the IV. And before I get started, I would make sure that I'm assessing the patient's IV site before I give anything through it. And that would include making sure that you look at the actual insertion site to make sure that there is no bleeding or drainage coming from there. There's no swelling and um, just maybe some bruising. You could, you know, if there was bruising, you wanna look for that too. Um, you wanna look at the tubing, make sure that it's nice and clear. And you also would want to kind of palpate around the site to make sure that the patient doesn't complain of any tenderness or pain. So when I press on that, Tim, do you note any pain or tenderness? No. Okay, good. So the IV site looks really, really good, and I had just flushed it prior to coming in with my primary fluid, so it flushes very well, so it's patent. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Let's go turn around. So just don't mind me, Tim, I'm just gonna be getting the uh, IV fluid ready. So what I did um, prior to coming in is I did my, my first two checks on the IV medication. I took it out of, you know, it's considered a medication even though it's a fluid, so we always wanna do our three medication checks on fluid no matter what. And so I did that at the Pixis, and now I'll do my final check um, here in the room. So I would do that with my computer and the scanning system with the patient's ID band. But we have here a 0.9 sodium chloride solution, which is a common solution that we give. It's isotonic, so it matches the fluid um, osmolarity in our body. So you may see different setups with IV bags, but typically they'll have a, an area where you, a slit where you can just open them up easily. And you do not necessarily need to wear gloves when you're um, prepping your bag but I would recommend putting gloves on when you're dealing with the IV site. All right, so here we have the bag. We're gonna inspect it. We're gonna make sure it's clean, clear, so there's no cloudiness, no discoloration. Make sure it's not leaking. Um, and then again, just kind of looking at it all over, make sure it's not expired, which we did also check when we did our checks. All right, so we have our bag there. Now we have tubing that's gonna go along with it, and this is a tubing set at um, 10 drops per milliliter. So it's gonna have, so 10 drops will equal one milliliter of volume that the patient is gonna get. So you just wanna make sure you grab the right tubing and it's a primary set. Um, so it means it's gonna be a little bit longer in length than you would with a secondary set. So again, we're gonna open that. And typically I like to keep it contained. I don't like to go crazy and open it all up right away because that way you don't have the tubing flying all over and getting contaminated. Um, it's really, there's one part that we have to keep sterile, but for the most part, I try to keep it kind of contained. So I'm just gonna take this little thing off. So here we have the tubing, and then I'm gonna go ahead and if you look at the roller clamp, um, right now the, the roller clamp is open. Okay, so we basically want to close that roller clamp before we um, prime the IV. So let me just show you here, there's two clamps. There's one here and there's the roller clamp. So this roller clamp is way down at the bottom of the tubing. So I'm gonna try to move it up a little bit more because it's just easier to work with. So I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit, okay? So this clamp, you would just push it together and that would clamp the IV tubing. Um, or you can open it. This is your roller clamp. 
when it's in the up position that means it's open when you push it in the down position that means it's clamping off the tubing so that the fluid doesn't run out okay so you always want this clamped right away so every time you open up a tubing bag clamp your tubing right away otherwise you're gonna spike it in the fluid and it's gonna start running out all over the place so just keep that in mind all right so now we have our IV fluid bag and you're gonna have two ports. You have this port that looks clear, then you have one that has a little rubber stopper on it. You wanna avoid that one with the rubber stopper because that is just in case you're going to add something to this bag, which is done rarely. But this is where you're actually gonna open the bag. And um, so I'm just gonna pull it down and open it. It won't come out because it's, there's, it's sealed, there's a valve. So you can see it won't come out, all right? Now you wanna be very careful not to touch that with anything because that is gotta be sterile. Normally I'd have this hanging up on the IV pole, but I wanted to be by the sink to show you how to prime it. So your, your spike is gonna go right into the IV bag and you might have to twist it a little bit to get it in there. But once it's in there, you know, you try to get as close to the hub as you can so that it, it's in there securely. Then you wanna go ahead and just kinda make sure that it's filling the drip chamber. So I filled my drip chamber up about half full. Now I'm ready to um, prime my bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find the end of my bag, which is right here, or my tubing, sorry, I said tubing. All right, yeah, I wish I could hang this a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna hold it like this and I have my, this is where the fluid's gonna come out of at the end. And I'm just gonna open it up over the sink Now, I'm not one that always opens the cap because I don't like to get it um, you know, on sterile and dirty. So I actually leave my cap on the end and it, it works fine. So then you wanna close it when you're done priming. So now I have fluid that went all the way through my tubing. And the reason I prime is because I want all the air out of it. I don't wanna give the patient air. Um, little champagne bubbles in there isn't gonna kill a patient, but um, if you have large air boluses in there, that can kill your patient. So you wanna, you know, 10 milliliters of air would um, be detrimental for your patient. So anyway, I'm gonna move on over here and we're gonna hang it up on the IV pole. Okay, we'll just make sure I'm moving along here. All right, Tim, I'm coming on over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up. Okay, and in some uh, facilities you might see that it's they label their IV tubing. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And all diff there's all different types of um, IV pumps that facilities use. So you just have to kind of play around and get acclimated to what your facility uses. All right, so this one here, I'm just gonna feed that in here. Okay. So now I fed that in there and it tells me to close the door. All right, so again, I have the tubing primed. Um, I have to look at the chart to see what the physician ordered the rate to be, um, but we can just say that the, the rate is going to be 100 mLs per hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in 100 and then I'm gonna press okay. And then this asks me the volume to be infused. So the patient is actually gonna get this bag, the whole bag the doctor has said 100 milliliters per hour until he discontinues it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in that, um, you know, there's a thousand mLs in there, which is one liter. Okay, so I'm gonna have that ready. And now that I've already checked the IV site, and I know that it's patent, I'm gonna tell Tim here that I'm gonna hook up his IV and just gonna quick wash my hands here and get that done. And just perhaps I might run into some, something unexpected. I'm gonna go ahead and put some gloves on just in case, because I'm working near an IV site. Not that I anticipate to get any body fluids on me, but you never know. I've been in situations where crazier things happen. All right, so I have my scrub hub, which contains your um, sanitizing solution right inside. 
So some facilities have caps that are already on there. Um, since there's no cap on here that's already disinfected, I'm gonna scrub this for at least 10 to 15 seconds. So we'll say it's been 10 seconds. All right, keeping that area from contamination, I'm going to go ahead then now and put this end on. Just screw that on, it's a lure lock to tighten it, okay? And then make sure that all your clamps are open now because if you have a clamp that's on, it won't work. So you wanna make sure that you all open all of your clamps. And then when you're ready to begin, you, you press run. Um, okay. All right, okay. So, I'm key it here. All right, and so now we are, we are running. So there we go, Tim. We have everything set up, and we have your IV in, and I'm just gonna make sure I watch it drip before I leave the room. We're gonna put the side rail up, take my gloves off, and okay. And we're just, it's just running. Okay, so now we're gonna throw this away, wash my hands. All right, Tim, let me know if you, um, start to feel any burning or you know if you feel it leaking there um, or any pain while that's going in I'm gonna step out I'll come back and check in 15 minutes to make sure everything is going okay does that sound good Okay. great all right so I'll give you your call light here make sure you have that and make sure your bed is locked and lowered anything else can I get you before I leave no. okay I'll just put your bedside table right here so that you have that um, access for you all right great all right we'll see you in a little bit tim thank you all right so also with our iv setup we want to make sure that we label our tubing um, you will follow your own facility policy as to how long um, or how frequent the tubing should be changed uh, for instance this one is a 96 hours so you would go ahead and put your initials in the rn initial spot and then the start date and time. So if I started it on today's date, and then I'd also wanna put the time that I, that I started this or put this tubing on. And then also you would want to put the end date where it needs to be changed. So 96 hours from today and today's time is when you would want to get this tubing down and change this, okay? The same with this one, it has 96 on here, you would do the same thing. Now some facilities you will see a 24 hour um, turnaround time where you have to change it 24 hours and some facilities too you might see 72 hours it just kind of depends um, but you have to know your um, facilities policy how often the tubing needs to be changed um, but that's very important otherwise you don't know how long it's been hanging